you know, Nick, uh, how you doing? God bless. I haven't talked to you in a long time, but it's good to be able to get back on here, you know, to be able to discuss some issues, you know, uh, that's going on around the country. Uh, you know, uh, you know, they did two no knocks in Killeen, and they killed this guy named Mr. Reed. And, you know, very few people, you know, talks about what happened to him. And, you know, uh, the, the issue is having a problem going out public with these no knock search warrants, right? Uh, in this area, you know, and, uh, they, uh, did a no knock at my house. And so, you know, you see how dangerous these no knocks are because now they're talking about them in DC about banning these no knock search warrants, uh, after they killed Brianna Taylor, the lady in Killeen. And so, you know, my issue is, you know, I've been here six years, going on seven years. And, you know, I've got uh, ineffective assistance counsel. These attorneys are straight working with the DA. They won't file my motions properly. You know, I just talked to them today, and the day is the 11th. They gave me like an hour ago, and they refused to file motions on my behalf. And the motions they filed are defective. And, uh, you know, I continue to have to argue with them, so I'm basically now requesting that they get off my case, but they refuse because they're getting paid and they're doing exactly what the judge uh, and the DA office tell them to do. And so it's tough, you know, you know, I mean, these cops came to my house and uh, basically they didn't have a warrant. Uh, you know, they opened fire, they shot each officer uh, in a crossfire, like it says in the report. And, you know, I'm still unable to, you know, I mean, after North Times, Washington Post, you know, put this out, it's still so hard for me to get people to see, you know. And so basically, you know, it's, it's just so much stuff going on. It's real frustrating, man. You know, you know, like I said, I've been here almost seven years. And, you know, they're tampering with the evidence in my case. And the lawyers keep running back, and the, and the judges' chambers coming out shaking. You know, I don't know what's going on back there, but they coming out shaking and telling me I won't be able to call witnesses on my behalf, that I won't be able to present my case. And so, you know, that's frustrating to me. You know, but you know, man, I, I'm just, I just, I just stay prayed up and stay focused up, man. You know, to keep my mind together, man, you know, because uh, with this COVID and all this other stuff going on, uh, you know, who knows, man, when, 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 you know, uh, the trial start. But I can tell you one thing, man, you know, with the events that's going on around the country today, people are now starting to see that just because the police say something, that don't make it right, you know. And people uh, uh, call these no-knock search warrants, and from what I've been hearing, they call these no-knock search warrants, uh, the police use them, they call them nigger, nigger hunting. So most of these officers, they go in this area, when they get these no-knock search warrants, they going out to have fun, they going out to hunt. You know, it don't make no difference, like in none of these cases. Are they finding drugs in the house? In Brianna case, they found no drugs. And Killeen, Mr. Reed house, they found no drugs. And these no knock search warrants in Killeen. And in my house, they found no drugs. You know, so what's happening here and what happened in my case is that they went and got the search warrant after they committed the act. Because these judges in the DA office, people have to start voting these people out. These people been in office for 20 years. It's in regards, he's been in office for 20 years, and he, he a police officer, he just killed uh, a guy named Michael Dean here in, in the temple, blew his brains out, shot him right between his eyes, came here, stayed in jail for a month or two, and got right back out after he murdered somebody. The police came to my house. I didn't shoot them. I'm charged with capital murder, facing the death penalty, been in jail for six years, you know what I'm saying, and being telling told I'm going to get the death penalty. And they put these, 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 these lawyers on my 
case. And it's tough, man. It's just tough, man. It's tough for me to go through that. Then, you know, the black officers did a no knock in Houston. And they got fired, quickly fired. They run up on state state and federal charges. In my case, the police came to my house without a warrant. They took the service warrant. When the warrant went bad, they shot the police in the crossfire. Then when I came out, pistol with me, stuck a gun in my mouth, stuck some up my ass. When my girlfriend Shirley came out, my fiance, when she came out, she came out with her hands up. They tackled her, broke her ribs, you know, slammed her face on the ground where she shit and pissed all over herself. You know what I'm saying? And because these officers were white who did it, they protected them. You know what I mean? They protected them for this malicious conduct and the DA's office protect them. So how is it that uh, I'll be able to get a fair trial? I can't. There's no way. You know, and, and, you know. so it's been seven years. I've told my lawyers, listen, you guys need to call these witnesses. They refuse to do that. I tell them they need to file my motions correctly. I file my own motions. I'm going to send them to you so you can put them online. And so the motions that they file it, and I'm, and I'm requesting them to do the motions right because I will not have a chance to raise my issue. And they will waive my issue. And I won't, if I'm convicted, I won't be able to get back to court. And I'll be stuck on death row. And I ain't even shoot nobody. So it just shows you, man, the times that we living in injustice. It's not just the police where we face injustice. We face injustice in the courts who allow this kind of conduct. We face, face uh, injustice in the DA's office, you know, in appellate courts. You know, it's just, it's, it's so, it's, it's bigger than just what happened to Mr. Foy, you know what I'm saying, you know, and it, it's a whole lot of people like Mr. Reed and Colleen, who they kicked his door in, he lost his life, you know, my house, you know, they upset because they didn't kill me, and so my question is, how are you going to serve another department search warrant that's against policy? It's not possible for Mosley, who tried to cover for them because he worked in Killeen. He lives, he works in the next town over. He claims he got a search warrant. And so the Killeen Police Department cannot serve Mosley's warrant. He cannot tell them to go serve the warrant. And so that's just policy. But they came to my house because of Reinhardt. The sergeant was on duty, put him up to do it. And then when they got caught with their pants down, the officials here and the DA office and the judges want to cover for the police because they were white and I was black. And so I, I put everything I could online. It's telling you they were in the crossfire. It's telling you where the officers fell at the front door. You know, that's all I can do, man. But this area is real, real racist, bro. You know, it's real, real bad. You know, and so... You know, people are starting to see, but, you know, it's, it's tough, man. You know, they control the jury. You know, they get a jury in that will convict you. If you, you so the, the, we face, man, just issues all over, not just black people. I mean, here is everybody, the whites. Uh, you had George Powell uh, wrongly convicted. He's a white guy. You have Mexican people. You have black people. This DA office needs to be this bad and people need to get out and vote and vote these people out of office, man. You know, because if the police continue to believe that they can serve these no-knock search warrants and not even have a reason and say that they're nigger hunting, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and do this and then can't prove how, in my case, they have no drug sales, but they tell the public that. The, the person they claim was the CIA said, I've never told you guys any of this. We have a, a tape of him saying this. Uh, the, the police that claimed that he got the search one said he never seen me do anything on the stand. But the way that the judge 
and my lawyer in the DA shaping my case up, you know, they shaped it up where I can be convicted. So now I'm in a position where I have to try to represent myself, you know, or something, man. But it, 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 it's hurting, man. It's sad. It's challenging. You know, every time I see my lawyer, man, they fail to follow the American Bar Association rules of communication, and they fail to follow scope of rest, uh, American Bar Association Rule 102, uh, scope of representation. I mean, they come in and put these motions in, and they don't communicate, you know, these motions to me where I can make an informed decision. They've come in the courtroom and had motions that they would present to the court that they didn't even know what the motion was. They wanted to get some evidence based on the police officers who went to see counseling, but at the end of the motion, he had, it was a motion to dismiss. And, you know, uh, so it's tough, man. So I believe they're co he's coming in, Carlos Garcia is coming in, and the DA telling them, look, do this. You know, because he, he sure don't know the legal significance of uh, representing the adult public case, man. It takes intensive training and experience to represent a, a adult public case. They have no skills as far as adult penalty. Neither one of these these lawyers ever represented a adult penalty case. And I'm, I'm just, man, I'm dumbfounded, man. You know, I filed complaint, complaint on them. You know, so like I said, the whole system, man, is corrupt, you know? And so uh, one of my lawyers tell me finally, he tells me a couple weeks ago when he came to visit me, you ain't going to be able to get the witnesses called that you want to want, you want, because the judge ain't going to let it. Or, you know, it, you know, so the day I confronted him with this, and he claims he didn't take it, you know? And so it's tough, man. You know, it's tough, bro. But... I'm going to keep my, 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 my spirits up, you know, and, and my praise up. But, you know, it's hard, man. When you see your attorney, it's supposed to be about strategizing. These attorneys have been on my case for five years, and that's all we've done is argued about legal issues. I'm not asking them to do nothing illegal. I'm just asking them to file the motions in my case. And I'm going to send those motions to you. So you can put them online so I can show you the difference, the legal difference and the different legal theories that they use it that will waive my issues. But, you know, I hope people pay more attention. And I've heard that people have been, been looking at, at, this, uh, at these statements that the officers made. And, you know, it, it, it's, you know, you don't have to believe me. The reports say everything. You know, the reports say what happened. You know, and so if you have to read it uh, two or three times to, to get an uh, understanding of it, keep reading it. And so what they try to do is keep the officers who testified to what they saw that night from testifying. You know, and that's happened to a lot of people. I've seen that happen to people where they get ambushed at trial and their lawyers tell them, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And when they go into trial... And they'll come back, and I ask them about, well, hey, what happened? Oh, man, they didn't even call a witness. So a lot of times, you know, they violate your right to a fair trial before you even get into the court. And so if you don't have the witnesses there, then you can't put your case on where it can, the, the jury can view the whole case and make informed decisions based on your guilt or your innocence. And so they want to take the, the officers out. They won't, you know, I told them, you know, it's something called uh, deuce tecum, motion deuce tecum, where this is a, it's a situation where your lawyers are called before, I mean, the witnesses are called before and asked to bring the evidence and everything that they have and, and what, to, what they're, they're taking part in your case to bring everything that they have, any report, any any write up or anything, then they're supposed to put it on the stand and give it to you. This is the only way you can cross examine. We have one minute left. So a lot of times when people try to uh, cross witnesses on the day of trial, 
they don't have to say what they said then. They can say, we don't remember. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, 